In today's Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition rule set breakdown, we will talk about weapons and armor. Hey everyone, I'm Wisa of Content Critters, here to teach you the basics of D&D 5e for Baldur's Gate 3. If you're interested in more Baldur's Gate 3 lore, news, and guides, consider subscribing to the channel and hitting the bell to receive notifications when new videos go live. Without further ado, let's begin! Larian Studios has not confirmed the full list of weapons and armor that will appear in Baldur's Gate 3, so we will directly lift these from the player's handbook. Let's start with weapons, which will break down in terms of proficiency, properties, improvised weapons, and special weapons. First is proficiency, which depends on your race, class, and feats or talents such as dual wielding that grants bonuses to both simple and martial weapons. Simple weapons include clubs and maces, whereas martial weapons include swords and axes. The latter is predominantly used by warriors due to their specialized fighting styles. When you are proficient with a weapon, the bonus you get from it is added to an attack roll, provided you equip said weapon. On the other hand, if you wield a weapon you're not proficient in, say a wizard attacking with a crossbow, there won't be any bonuses. Second are properties. When using ranged weapons, it's important to take into account the distance between yourself and your foes to determine whether or not you will hit them. In the weapons table, there are normal and maximum ranges in between the parentheses. So for instance, using a javelin will grant you a normal range of 30 feet and a maximum range of 120 feet. Attacking a target beyond the normal range gives you a disadvantage on the attack roll, whereas attacking beyond the maximum range will guarantee a miss. The javelin is also known to have a thrown property since you can throw it to make a ranged attack. At different times, this can also be used as a melee weapon where the same strength ability modifier is added to your attack roll. In the event that you use a finesse weapon such as a dagger, which has both strength or dexterity modifiers, you use either. Suppose you suddenly decide to do a ranged attack with a crossbow at a melee distance. You will incur a disadvantage. With ranged weapons, it's also important to remember the number of ammunition you have in order to attack your enemies. Similar to Divinity Original Sin 2, there will probably be a useful skill to recover a percentage of the arrows you've spent. Each attack costs one piece of ammunition, especially with weapons that account for the loading time such as a blowgun and crossbow. Another useful property is versatile weapons where you use one or two hands. Generally, two-handed weapons like a greatsword offer more damage, but wielding it tends to make you slower due to the heavy weight. Third, we have improvised or makeshift weapons, depending on what the situation calls for. That can be wielded using one or two hands. Examples include a broken glass or a frying pan. In some cases, its attributes are similar to actual weapons. Last are special weapons in the form of a lance and net. Since a lance has a reach property, attacking a foe within 5 feet will give you a disadvantage. Meanwhile, nets can be used to restrain only a small or large creature. When it comes to armor, there are quite a few things to remember including proficiency, armor class, stealth checks, shields, and weight, as there are so many types to choose from depending on your character's needs. First is armor proficiency, which is dependent on your class. So for example, you choose a Starion, a Rogue. Given that rogues focus primarily on stealth, he is proficient with light armor so he can move efficiently in an agile manner. Now if you don a heavy armor on him, he won't be able to perform his sneak attacks to assassinate enemies. Wearing armor that you're not proficient in will involve penalties. This includes having a disadvantage on strength or dexterity ability checks, saving throws, or attack rolls. It can even prevent you from casting spells. Second is the armor class or AC, which determines how much of your total armor, including the shield, protects you from damage. These determine your base AC together with your racial bonuses, magical items if any, and your dexterity modifier. A higher AC puts you at an advantage against enemy attack rolls with medium to low difficulty classes since they are not likely to inflict damage on you. An enemy is able to deal a decent amount of damage when his or her attack roll is greater than your AC. Third is Stealth. The armor table I'm showing now indicates which specific armor gives this advantage on Stealth, such as a padded light armor and a scale male medium armor. 
Fourth is a shield, where wielding one automatically increases your armor class by two. And last is the armor's weight in terms of heavy, medium, and light armor. Heavy armor weighs down a character's ability to move quickly and stealthily, which is why it is not recommended if you intend to frequently sneak around the goblin camp to survey their rituals. In the armor table, you will notice specific heavy armor such as a chainmail, splint, and plate with corresponding strength scores of 13 or 15. These reduce speed by 10 feet unless the character's strength is 13, 15, or higher. Also, only light and medium armor have additional dexterity modifiers. As a bonus, you should also consider how long or short it takes to don, don off, or doff armor depending on its type. As expected, heavy armor takes the longest to put on and to remove. Are you already thinking about the type of weapons and armor you'll be using in Baldur's Gate 3? Let me know in the comments section below. So that's it for today guys, thank you for watching. I'll be back again this week for more Baldur's Gate 3 videos.